Hey, my name is Tom George. I am a longtime Spectora user and I also sell my template to other Spectora users. I am making this video today to talk about the most commonly asked questions that I get about my template. I don't just sell my current version. Anytime that our template gets added onto or big improvements are made, we will include those changes to people who have purchased our template in the past. So stick around. At the end of the video, we are going to show a kind of a sneak peek. We're going to thoroughly go through one section of our template in detail. So stick around. All right. The first question I'm going to talk about is not necessarily a question that comes from people who are interested in buying my template, but it's just a question that I'm sure everybody's asking. Why would you want to buy a template? Well, Spector is an amazing software. It can make you so efficient when writing reports and doing home inspections that you get more time to spend at home doing the things that you love and less time writing reports. But the biggest, probably two things that you need to be efficient at home inspections and report writing are obviously your routine and how you go through the house and do your inspection, but also your template. A good template has to have you know, most of your common defects, you got to have all those comments for the regularly found defects. Um, they also have to be organized. They have to be from credible resources that take a lot of research. And uh, basically, it takes a very long time to make a good, solid template. So that is why we have decided to sell ours to help others uh, basically not have to do that step. So one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is, is this template ideal for new inspectors? The answer is yes. If you're a newer inspector or if you're a multi-inspector company and you have a lot of new inspectors, this template would be great for you. There is a feature with Spectora called Reminders. It is one of my all-time favorite Spectora features and it has made our training process for new inspectors almost get cut in half. We have the ability now to have a newer inspector who is very new inspect major systems of the home by simply clicking on a button that says reminders in the app and then have a check by check or a step by step process um, in inspecting those. So stick around because in the end when we do the sneak peek I'll more explain the reminders and show how beneficial they are. Another question that I commonly get asked is how are the comments or narratives worded? Generally speaking I try to stick to the three D's which is defect describe and direct. I state what the defect is. I try to describe what could happen if that defect is not addressed. And then I direct them to what type of contractor would typically address that situation so that that contractor can decide how it should be repaired. Um, I don't use words like appears or one or more. Um, a typical comment for me would be like, an active leak was observed underneath the sinks and the S would be in parentheses. Um, in order to avoid moisture intrusion, I recommend having the leak evaluated and repaired as necessary by a licensed plumber. That's about it. Adding that S with parentheses around it still makes my report writing process very efficient because if there's one or two, it still applies. And then we just simply use location tags and pictures to show how many and where they were. Uh, but it does sound a lot better than one or more, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how they're worded. So. Any questions about that, you can feel free to reach out to me. I've had several people ask if I write reports on site. The answer is yes, my whole team does. Um, when I'm done with a home inspection, I typically still spend about five or 10 minutes. Um, I go through and I proofread every comment and I basically try to add detail where necessary. I wanna make sure that every reader of that report completely understands everything. Um, also, you're not gonna have every narrative for every possible defect in your template. You are gonna to have to make some. Generally speaking, I'd say I'd probably make one or two per house. Uh, the way that I do that, my process is when I'm in the house, I will create a new comment. I will title it, add pictures, add my arrows, circles, however, and then I just save it and I move on. During that five or 10 minutes though, after the inspection, that's where I go through and I add that verbiage. I finish that comment, save it, and then I'm done. It, there's very minimal after the inspection. Most of our reports are done completely on site. The next big question that I get is, how does payment work and how will you receive the template? So very easy, um, I will need an email. I specifically need the email that is associated with your Spectora account. 
I will send you a PayPal request to that email. Once it's paid, I will get notified and then I will send you the template. In the template editor, when you're on Spectora, if you click on that and then click on my templates, you'll see my template. All right, the next big question that I regularly get asked is, what state are you in and is your template specific to that state? Well, I am in Colorado and no, the template, most of the resources that were used to make this template were the IRC, the UMC, DCA6, a lot of manufacturer's guidelines and just basic, um, the best building practices. So this template would work in any state. But with that being said, I will say that some of the more highly regulated states like Florida and Texas, you may have to do quite a bit of work to it to make it work and meet all of the requirements that you guys have to follow. So just let that be known. If you're in one of those states, you're probably still gonna have to do quite a bit of work to it. All right, next question is, will me editing my template affect the version of the template that you purchased? And the answer is, they're not going to affect each other. Once you receive the template, you can start making changes and editing it and making your own. And if I continue editing it, it's not gonna affect yours. And the edits that you're doing are not going to affect mine. All right, the next concern that I've gotten is, how will it work when I send you an updated version of the template or after I've made big changes, how are you gonna get those? And it's pretty easy. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you an email. I'll let you know exactly what I did and what's included in this new version. And then the next time you check your My Templates page, you'll see a new version there. Now it probably won't be the whole home inspection template, it'll just be the sections that I changed. So for example, if I go through and redo the radon mitigation section, I'll email you, tell you what's different about it. Then when you go to my templates, open it up, you'll see just a radon mitigation system section. Then you'll have the option. You could either say you hadn't uh, really made any changes to the old radon mitigation system section. You could just delete it and then move this one into the other template that you've been working with and editing. So you also have the option though to just do individual comments. If you've already made a bunch of changes, you could go through and just uh, pick which ones you want to implement into the version that you've already been working with. So it is very easy. Everything will be optional and I will include in an email exactly what we're looking at so that you can choose what you want to do with it. All right, so here I have a sample report pulled up. I'm not going to go into it in too much depth, but I did just want to kind of give a quick view of what a sample report looks like that we built with this template. What I'll do is I'll put a link to this sample report in the description below. That way people can look at it um, at their convenience. This was a brand new build, by the way. If you can imagine quite a bit going on here. But anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into our uh, Spectora app, which is where we actually build the home inspection report. So that you can see I have a mock inspection here. I'm gonna go into home inspection report. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is how this is a systems-based template. It's not a room-based. All of our sections are based on the systems of the house and not the location that they're in. So we're gonna pick one section. I'm gonna go through air conditioning and we will go through this section in depth. Now that big green rectangle at the top that says view reminder, that is one of my all-time favorite Spectora features. I'm gonna expand that. So these are all of our reminders that we have specifically to the AC section. They are laid out. You can see where it says at the condenser on the top left. And then in about the middle of the screen, it says at the electrical service panel. And then if I go down, it says at the coil. So they are laid out so that you can inspect um, certain components and have reminders that are specific to that component. I will say that these are not um, a guide per se to inspecting, they are just reminders. The inspector will still need to know the knowledge and everything associated with inspecting it, but these are a very helpful tool as far as remembering, you know, certain numbers like clearances and amperages and things like that. And it's just a nice little step-by-step -step guide. If you, ha if you are a new inspector or if you have a new inspector on your team, these are a nice way to where you can send a newer inspector to inspect a major system. And because you have these reminders, you can have that confidence in them. I like to use these for newer inspectors until they are fairly established 
really just so it builds that muscle memory and it helps build their routine so that they are checking for the same things every time. All right, so now I'm gonna go down into our informational comments, which I would imagine look like everybody else's. This is all pretty much based on our standards of practice. You know, we include the manufacturer, the approximate age, energy source. We include the max fuse or circuit breaker. And we have a couple limitations there. And we have some more under the general cooling comment. Here we'll go into our actual defects. Big thing I wanna point out here is how when we make a comment, our title is structured to say the component dash the defect. This is very important for your uh, organization of your template. The global search tool is the biggest way to be efficient in your report writing. If you're not familiar with what that is, take a look in the top right corner there where it just has that magnifying glass. I'm gonna click on it here. This is our global search tool. Now, because the way that all my comments are structured, I can search for, say, condensation drain slope. Um, by the way, you do not have to search by full words. If you look up there, I only wrote three letters of the first word, four letters of the second word, but I still found my condensation drain improper slope comment. Let's try that again. So let's say I want to find that the line set insulation damage. Whoops, you have to spell things correctly for this to work. So there you have it. There's my line set repair slash replace insulation comment. So I'm gonna go back. You can see condensation drain. There's all of our defects that are associated with a condensation drain. And because they're structured like this, they are very, very easy to find. If I wasn't able to find it because I didn't know, you know the, the verbiage or the term uh, that was used, I can still go to my cooling, go to condensation drain, they're all in alphabetical order, and I can still find that comment, even if I didn't want to use the global search. All right, well that is about it for this little sneak peek. All right guys, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope I answered all the basic questions, but if anybody has any other questions, or if you want pricing, you can always reach me on Facebook. My name is Tom George. Please feel free to send me a message at any time, or you can send me an email. My email is tom.aprecise at gmail.com. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.